Good morning. I'm glad you're able to be with us for this weekly devotional. I said morning because I am recording this of a morning. As I began to think earlier today about the time of year we are in, about the situations that are around us each day, I began to think of certain things that we do, how we act, how we live our lives. What can a man say? And I thought for a moment, sometimes it's good just to remain simple. Just to remain simple. In Philippians, the fourth chapter, Paul talks of, to those in Christ of placing their anxieties of life upon God, of looking to him, of emptying themselves to him. And in saying these things, in the willingness to let ourselves go, give our anxieties to him, Paul says this in Philippians 4, verse 7, he says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. But to what avail? Why, why is this so important for us? What is happening? You see, when we do this, it relieves our being to other things. We don't have to worry about ourselves. We don't have to worry about our anxieties or our difficulties in life. We have given them to God. So if we relieve ourselves of those things which, which occupy our mind so often as human, and thinking on worldly situations. What does it relieve us for? I want us to read the next few verses. Specifically, 8 through 10. It says that God will guard our hearts before. He will take care of us. Then he says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. The King James says here, whatever is of good report. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Practice these things. You know, we are to live a godly life as children of God. And I began to think about what he's talking about. We are to focus on the things which please God. To live God's will and way. To see the good in all, however small that might be. If these who are sought by God were to teach and to show good to every man. In this time there are many who celebrate the Christ and yet are without understanding. Many who celebrate him are without hope. As we think about these things, to be able to show each man the kindness and the goodness and the love of God should be the ultimate thing in our life. To live as Christ would live. To show others hope. To encourage others to see this Christ. To encourage others to see the love. It's in some manners just that simple. To be one who is willing to give to others that which they need that they might understand that there is a God, that there is hope, that there is love in the world, that people are good. We show you so much evil around us each day. 
In 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, in verse 17, it says, as for, the rich, as for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor set, them, set their hopes on uncertainty of riches. For those who are rich, I know he's talking about those who are rich in monetary things. So often we feel like these monetary things can give us or bring us anything that we want. But I want us to listen to what he says. He says, do not set your hopes on the uncertainty of riches, earthly riches, worldly riches, but on God who richly provides us with everything to enjoy as children of God. God has provided us with all the riches that are necessary. The riches in God, those things that really are of great value He said to those who enjoy everything or have everything who provides us, let's just go back, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. For those of us who have all of those things to enjoy, he said they are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. I want us to think about that. To be generous, to be ready to share. To be willing to take that person that we meet on the street, the person we see each day, to offer a word of kindness, to offer the, that which is needed by them. Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's paying for a bill of groceries. I don't know. Maybe it's to give them a hug if that is allowable by that person that day in this situation. Maybe it's to share the goodness of Christ. Maybe they're ready to hear those things. Maybe it's to offer a kind word, a smile, but it is to be generous. To offer something to that person that gives them encouragement, that helps them to see the love of Christ, the love of God. To be one who goes about offering good things to everyone they meet. That's who we're to be. Those good things ultimately come to that which Christ has given the world and the love that God has for mankind. That's the most important thing we can give to someone and yet oftentimes we need to help them see the good in the world first. That there are those who are good, those who care. And then offer them this Christ being the reason we care. That we see the things we need to see. It's not about ourselves. Belonging to Christ is not about ourselves. And so often <clears throat> we make this celebration of Christ one. That means we get gifts. We have what we want. We, we spend the money and we care for others. But it's always what we receive. Receive in a world we won't pat on the back. But you should live for Christ. Live for Christ. Offering the things that are good in the eyes of God. Sometimes that is earthly wealth. Earthly riches. Earthly things. But we're to do it without any concern toward ourselves. But there is something here that is good for us to recognize and know that through these deeds of kindness and goodness, those that are done because we love God. In the last verse, in 19, he says, Thus storing up treasures for themselves as a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of what or so they may take hold of that which is truly life. This idea of living in Christ, doing those things for God, seeking to show others his love, his kingdom. See, we're seeking to do what God asks us to do. And that which he will give us is an eternal life with him. But we must seek these things as God has set forth. Being those kind of people we should be. 
even in a world that is full of hate and evil, discomfort, distrust. Live your life for God. Live it with a smile. Live it with kindness. Live it with goodness. Do those things that are lovely in God's eyes. As you go through this week, I hope you think about these things and I hope you seek to do these things for God, not for yourself. That you might be willing to give yourselves over and find the true joy of living in God. Thank you for being with us today. May God bless each one of you till we meet again.